Good evening, church. Glad you could join us tonight. Stand with us if you're in the house or stand up if you're in the kitchen or wherever you're at. And let's lift our voices to the Lord. Oh, my. 
strength is failing to yet draws and my time has come still Test me and know my concerns. See if there's any offensive way in me. He's saying, is there anything wicked? Is there anything idolatrous? Is there any idols that have crept up into my life? And then lead me in the way everlasting. And so what I want to do tonight is just have a... Just some moments of silence as we just kind of sit in the presence of God and calm our hearts so that we can maybe hear from God and then just want to spend some time in prayer just going through this uh, psalm for a few minutes and use it as a way to just kind of uh, get us to thinking, how has our day been? How has our week been? Um, where are we in our walk with the Lord? Uh, before we go to the, look at God's Word some more, and before we pray, uh, we've got to have our hearts right with God. We've got to be in tune with God. And so let's just go, Lord, for just a few moments here in silence, and then I'll lead us through the rest. So let's go to the Lord.
Heavenly Father, we, we do know your word says just be still. And know that you're God. And Lord, I know those seconds of silence might have been unnerving for some. And Lord, you already know that. Father, just help us to sit in your presence right now. We need your presence. We need you, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask you would search our hearts right now. Have your thoughts spin. And the amazing thing is God knows them all, good and bad. like Brad I don't know if I have any sin in my life just look at verse 23 ask God to search you test me know my concerns if there's anything in your life the Holy Spirit will bring it up right now Have you spent time with the Father this week? Do you want a closer walk with the Lord? Are there any idols or anything that's hindering you from wanting more of God in your life? And Lord, we just ask that you would teach us more about you, Lord, each and every day. Lord, we are grateful that you know everything about us and you still love us. You still care about us. This 4 and 5 and 6 here just still verses just kind of blow me away that you know everything that I'm going to say before I even say it. And that you're aware of all our paths and our travels and even when we sleep you know everything that's going on so lord we are grateful for that but lord we do ask if there's anything in our lives that's not right lord may you bring it up so that we can confess it right now so that we can allow you to lead us in the everlasting way And so, Lord, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for just those few scriptures that lead us to remind us that we have a relationship with you and that we ought to desire to want to know more and more of you each and every day. Forgive us, Lord, when we get comfortable and complacent and lazy in our walk. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters tonight that we might have a greater desire to want to know you each and every day. And the great thing is, <laughs> you want to reveal yourself to us more and more each day if we're willing to spend time with you. So Lord, we ask that you would meet with us, speak to us, whether we're in person or online, but Lord, we just need you. Nothing else, nothing more. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to remind you, uh, tomorrow is uh, National Day of Prayer.
And so just be in prayer for our nation. Um, there's a prayer service, I think, downtown at noon and a prayer service at Dexter, uh, I believe, at noon, too, tomorrow. Um, so uh, most of all, be praying for, just be praying for our nation. Uh, tonight we're in this series, Revival, and we want to look tonight at Revival of the Word. And uh, Psalm 119, we want to look at, uh, I'll use this since I got this wife, my, Janice told me this joke before we came in here, um, to liven things up for a minute if I can remember it. But uh, basically this young couple, this couple had a uh, pastor over for a meal. And after uh, uh, he'd been there, she couldn't find a spoon. It's like, why would the pastor steal my spoon? So one year later, they invite the pastor back over for a meal, and she's like, Pastor, you remember when the last time you were over here, did you happen to take one of our spoons? And he said, no, I just put it in your Bible. So the Bible is an authoritative word of God. The Bible is not a bunch of helpful hints on how to have happiness in life. But Satan is always trying to undermine the credibility of the Bible in your life and get you to think you don't need to read it, spend any time in it. It doesn't impact your life. But if you just read the, the few verses that we just saw, it ought to impact your life that God knows everything about you and he wants to encourage you and, and draw you closer through his word. And so... Reason we, another reason we need to be in the Word is because the devil and the culture is fighting everything about the Bible today. You say, what do you mean? Well, just open up your eyes. That's why critical race theory and intersectionality and social justice is crashing into our world, but it's also crashing into our churches and our seminaries at, at fast rates. See, people are using culture to interpret Scripture instead of using Scripture to interpret culture. And you just look anywhere, everywhere you see. I mean, he's got a guy, this guy got a podcast out there now. It's like, man, I got same-sex attraction, no problem being attracted to same sex, and I can still... I can be sold out, surrendered to Jesus Christ each and every day. And I, and, but I got this same-sex attraction that, you know, it's no big deal. What is that? That's culture interpreting Scripture. Instead of Scripture interpreting what's going wrong here. And so tonight, we want to look at revival of the Word. The word revive, let me just remind you, simply means to live again and to be renewed in life. Just means to be renewed in life. Now, what was interesting, last week we, were in, we read Psalm 119. That was uh, three days of our readings. We are reading Psalm 119, which is the longest chapter in the Bible, has the most verses, 176 verses. And I was reading and reading in the CSB, and it, kept being hammered with this phrase give me life give me life and i was like that sounds like revival so i went back and looked at the new king james and the new king james and then in the new American state it says revive me revive me and i was like man that's what we need today a revival of god's word because our spoon has been in there a year and we hadn't opened it up. And so the purpose tonight is just to talk for a few minutes about this. We need a revival of personally reading and engaging with the Word of God. We need a revival of personally reading. Got to read it, but then we've got to engage with it if it's going to change our lives and so I want to go through this psalm t tonight. Is I, I've read it last week, and hopefully you read it last week, and God just kind of kept 
hammering. I was like, hey, this is, I know where I need to go for next Wednesday because uh, this is where God's got me. So tonight, just want to give you five ways uh, that we need to have God's word in our lives so it, it can revive us. Number one, the word can rejuvenate your life. The word can rejuvenate your life. Psalm 119 verse 25 says this, my life is down in the dust. Give me life according, give me life through your word. Okay? Or like I said, New King James, New American Samuel said, revive me. Give me life. Again, revival is for Christ followers that have gotten complacent, uh, like the church at Laodicea, and they need to be revived and waken up again to the power and the importance and the priority of God's Word in our lives. See, God's Word gives life, and it should be our life. And may we be revived uh, in living according to God's ways. And we're going to look at a lot of verses, so you may just have to write down stuff on your outline there. If you're online, you should be able to get an outline too uh, there also. Uh, so we're going to look at several verses all out of pretty much Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse uh, 154 and 155 says, Champion my cause and redeem me. Give me life as you promise. Salvation is from the wicked because they do not study your statutes. Salvation is from the wicked. It's far from the wicked. It's far from the wicked. Because they do not study your statutes. Now, let's flip that on the other side. If you've been redeemed, and you have Christ in you, and you have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then that means you ought to want to study and read and engage with the Word of God. See, revival comes when we have a sense of spiritual need and humility. True revival, as you read even in the Bible that we've been looking at these revivals in the Old Testament, came because people had an awareness of their sin and an urgency to confess things and make things right. Now, God has many ways He can revive us. And the one we're looking at tonight is through the Word. Now, there's many other ways He can revive us through prayer and other ways He can get our attention. But we need to understand the pathway to personal revival. I'm talking about personal revival. Church, you want to see revival? You've got to get back to the Word. But personally, you want to be revived? You want to uh, hear God speak? You want to hear God uh, just minister to you? You want to hear God convict you? You want to hear God challenge you? You want to hear God just give you stuff that just blows your mind away and encourage you? you got to be in the Word of God. And then it can rejuvenate you. You, know, you say, what do you mean? Give me an example. Well, have you ever been tired, depressed, discouraged, frustrated, fill in the blank? And you're like, all right, Lord, I just need some encouragement today. And God takes you somewhere. Or, or how many times has this happened? <laughs> if you follow along the reading plan, it just happens to be right where you need to be, and God ministers to your soul and rejuvenates you. And after that time you spent with him, you may have been tired, but when you come out of it, you're like, wow, I feel great now. Because you've been with in the presence of God. And so the Word can rejuvenate your life if you will get in it. Number two, the Word can cause you to hunger and thirst for righteousness. The Word can cause you to hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is Psalm 119, verse 40. Verse 40 says this, How I long... For your precepts. And remember, Psalm 119, there's like eight different words that refer to the Word of God, precepts, judgments, uh, on and on. 
And he said, man, how I long. Now, do we know who wrote this psalm? Remember, don't know. Many think it was possibly Ezra, okay? But not really sure. But whoever wrote it said, man, how I long for your precepts. Give me life through what? Your righteousness. He says, man, as I long for your word, then you revive me to live a right life for Christ. When do you and I get in trouble? When we're not in the word of God. When I'm not longing for the precepts, and I don't, have a, I don't have a desire for righteousness, I have a desire to do what this wants to do. That's why Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You want a full life? Hunger for God. Psalmist also said in verse 37, right before this, he says, Turn my eyes from looking at what is worthless and give me life in your ways. He's like, Man, revive me. Turn my eyes from, oh gosh, that's a verse we need for today. I mean, you don't even have to be looking and it comes flood in, in your in, into your vision today but give me life what revive me in your ways so i'll hunger and thirst for righteousness matthew henry some of you may have heard was a great 18th century bible commentator he was his father philip henry introduced him to psalm 119 and he, he encouraged matthew to take one verse okay one verse out of this psalm every day and meditate on it okay so there's 176 verses meditate on one verse a day which means in one year you'd go through this psalm twice apparently that exercise so greatly impacted his life um that it caused him to fall in love with god's word uh, and actually, Matthew Henry's got a commentary sent on the whole Bible that's been around since uh, Moses. <laughs> you know, it's like it's been around for a long time, and it's still available today. Um, just to, any Bible software, you just get it. Matthew Henry's commentary is going to be right there. Uh, and so it's because he hungered and thirsted for God's Word. Let me give you a third way we can experience revival. The Word can remind you of the compassion, faithful love, grace, and mercy of God. The Word can remind you of the compassion, the faithful love, grace, and mercy of God. And many times, that's what we need. I just mentioned that. Sometimes that's what we need. And the only place, one of the main places we're going to get it is through His Word. And so let me take you to a few verses here. Verse 88 says this, Give me life, or revive me in accordance with your faithful love, and when you do, I will do what? I will obey the decree you have spoken. So man, give me your Word. Revive me in accordance with your Word, and then I'm going to obey it. Look at uh, verse 149. It says, In keeping with your faithful love, he says, Hear my voice. And Lord, give me life in keeping with your justice. He's like, Revive me in how to live according to your word. May the word of God touch my life and it may it change the way I live. Verse 156 says this, your compassions are many, Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. And again, judgments is just another word used in Psalm 119 to refer to the Word of God. He said, man, revive me according to your judgments and to your Word. And then verse 159 says this, Consider how I love your precepts. Lord, give me life according to your faithful love 
as we get in God's word, many times he's going to remind us of his compassion, his faithful love, his mercy, his grace. All those things that we don't deserve, but he gives us because he loved us and has saved us. Spurgeon said this, A man may be stirred up to diligence by a sense of gratitude to God for great mercies. Where do we learn about the mercies of God? From the Word of God. And it's many times verses like that, as you read, God will bring them to your heart, and you're like, wow, thank you, Lord, I really needed to hear that. And many times those words will revive you and give you life for your relationship with him that you would have never had if you weren't engaging and spending time in god's word number four fourth way is this the word can guide and help you through affliction and tribulation the word can guide and help you through affliction and tribulation uh, verse 107 says this says i'm severely afflicted Lord, give me life according to your word. Now, I don't know when this was. I don't know if this is Ezra when they're in the Babylonian captivity and they may have thrown him in jail or he didn't have the freedom to preach and teach. I don't know. But he's like, Lord, give me life according to your word. Verse 50 says this. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise has given me life. He says, God, you promised me comfort in the affliction. And also this promise because you're there with me. Hey, I have life. Now, sometimes I didn't bring this verse up, but we were reading this in a D group the other night. Um, verse 67 says this. Before I was afflicted. Now, this is the opposite effect here it says before i was afflicted i went astray he says what but now i keep your word see some of us have to go through affliction and tribulation for god to get our attention and when god gets our attention we realize the importance of god's word and from that moment on we have a hunger and thirst for his word and he revives us over and over because we realize, man, I don't want to go back to that affliction because that affliction came upon my choices. And praise God, he's there for us. His word can guide us and help us through affliction, tribulation. We all have that. Paul Apple said, love for God's word is the pathway to a life of obedience that brings peace and hope. We all have affliction, tribulation. God's word is rich, it's sweet, it's comforting, it's there for us. As Lamentation says, his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And we just need to remember, his word is there to give us wisdom and guidance through anything that we ever face. And that's why we have to be revived according to God's word because we are going to go through times like that. And if we are not in the word and we go through those afflictions and tribulations, many times we're going to get tripped up. Number five, pray that God will revive you and give you understanding according to his word. Pray that God would revive you and give you understanding according to his word. Verse I may have put the wrong verse there. I gave her the wrong verse. That should be verse 169. That verse should be. Because on the bottom it's saying 69 there. So let me just read that to you. It says, let my cry reach you, Lord. Okay? Let my cry reach you, Lord. And then it says what? Give me understanding standing according to your word that's 169 give me understanding according to your word so if we want to spend more time with god we got to spend time in his word but the psalmist saying lord man i'm crying out to you lord okay 
Give me understanding according to your work. For that to happen, we got to pray for a revival of the word in our own lives. And what should we pray for in our churches? A revival of the word corporately. Because if you think everybody's reading the Bible that's in here in church on Sunday, you're smoking something. I mean, statistics tell us probably anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of the people might be reading their Bible just a few times during the week. Let me give you another verse you may want to pray, and I don't have it up on the screen, but it's in Psalm 119. It's verse 18. Let me read this. Verse 18, Psalm 119. I love this verse too. He says, Open my eyes so that I may contemplate wondrous things from your instruction. Like, Brad, I don't understand everything in the Bible. Well, join the club. I don't either. <laughs> Do I have all the answers? No, I don't have all the answers. Who does? The Holy Spirit. If he wants you to have them all, he'll give them to you. But this is a great prayer. Open my eyes so that I may contemplate wondrous things from your instruction. And again, we go back to one, Psalm 139, those verses 4, 5, and 6. Hey, God knows anything I'm going to ever say, and he knows it before I say it. It's so wondrous, I can't even contemplate that. So if you want to get revived in the Word, you've got to pray. In verse 18 and verse 169 are great prayers to pray. And when you start getting in the Word, you know what's going to happen? It's going to affect your mind. It'll affect your mouth. It'll affect your emotions. It'll affect your behavior. It'll even affect your conscience if you start engaging with the Word of God. If we're going to have a revival, yes, ultimately, we have to have prayer. But prayer in the Bible having number one priority must be there. We must have it. And so, as we see 119, this psalm, if we're going to have a revival, we've got to read and engage with God's Word on a daily basis. Let's not neglect God's Word. You say, Brad, what if I miss today? Again, just ask God to forgive you. Get back in the Word. If you missed a meal, what are you going to do? You'll eat again eventually. If you miss a meal with God, this is meal time, right? This is meal time right here. You miss a meal with God, ask God to forgive you and go back to the table. Spend time with God in His Word, and let's try to read it, believe it, obey it, and let it revive our lives. Let me give you some um, prayer time requests um, so we can pray for. And you online, these, you'll have them up there, and you can pray for them. And then uh, those in the house, if you've got urgent needs or individual needs, we're going to break up into groups, and you, if you don't mind the group knowing about it, you, you pray for it, okay? So, um, so that's what we're going to do. So let me give you run through these very quickly. Number one, pray that we might have a revival of wanting to read and engage with the Bible, Okay? Number two, pray that we will come to church filled with the Spirit and pray for an outpouring of His Spirit. Uh, pray for Mother's Day this Sunday and that many might come to church and many lives might be changed by the gospel. We were talking about this last night in Life Group. Uh, when I first started ministry, Mother's Day was uh, a great day because mothers could influence many of their prodigals to come to church and they would out of honor for mom i don't see that happening much anymore but let's pray it does because i promise you many in our body in every church have prodigals or you have adult children that don't go to church 
and the greatest thing that probably pleased mom would they be in the house of God so they might hear be under the the word of God and experience the presence of God and hopefully experience the spirit of God to where it might send an arrow of love and the word to their heart. So pray for Sunday. Number four, pray for our next generation search committee as we look for a student pastor and a children's minister. Uh, please pray for, and we've had, uh, I, don't, I don't have time to go into detail. Um, but we've had two candidates recently. We we're looking at bringing them on, and the last second they said, nope, we're going to another church. So, um, so just pray for us. This is, I ain't gone into a lot of details, but just pray, because the main thing is to pray. When we have any information, we'll let you know. Uh, but just pray for us. Uh, pray for our students and children. Uh, and their protection from the devil in the world and for their salvation. And uh, again, like I said, pray for May 16th. And then number seven, pray for all teachers and administrators that the Lord would work in their lives and give them wisdom and how to work with students. Again, um, we're grateful for your uh, help because we're able to, to actually go into two schools and do something for Teacher Appreciation Day. So, uh, again, thank you all. And, again, I talked to several teachers. And, and um, so let's pray for them. Um, just pray for them. If you want to know what's going on in schools, just go talk to them or go, uh, um, go pray in the school with me one day, and you'll find out um, our schools need a lot of prayer. And um, they're a huge mission field. So, so this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to break up and pray, and uh, I'm going to encourage you to break up in um, in about uh, however many groups we want to break up into. But uh, before in the house, we're going to do this, and I'm going to wrap up. What I'd like y'all to do before you go ahead and get in your group, but before you do any re any request, um, what I want to do is pray throughout the whole building for Sunday. And so what I want us to do is basically uh, wherever you're sitting, you kind of focus on that section, and I want us to pray around the seats and pray for the people that will be in these seats on Sunday and pray God would meet them right in that seat. And after you've done that, uh, then get in your group and pray take requests and pray so first thing i want to do is you sitting here y'all pray for this section y'all pray for this section and we'll go over here and pray for this section and let's just you say what do i need to pray pray whoever's sitting in this seat this seat and this seat whether it's family individuals marriages pray god would you just meet them may your presence speak to them and whatever else the Spirit leads you to pray. Okay? Remember what we... Sunday, pray in the Spirit. So allow the Spirit to direct you as you pray. And so you get as a group. Uh, you all pray over a section. And a couple of you finish before. Just sit and wait for the rest to come. And then take your request. Okay? So let's pray.